Today we're here to uh, dedicate the artwork behind me that celebrates the history of transportation in the Pikes Peak region. Uh, good transportation is a critical element in promoting economic vitality. Reliable transportation infrastructure is critical for public safety. And transportation innovation is woven deeply into the history of the Pikes Peak region. So to get things started this morning, let me welcome to the podium the president of the Board of El Paso County Commissioners, Commissioner Darrell Glenn. Well, I am, I'm glad the weather cooperated today. This is fantastic. You know, on behalf of the, the Board of County Commissioners, thank you so much for uh, showing up for this mural dedication. And I do want to recognize some people in the audience. You have the entire Board of County Commissioners, but we also have some special guests from the city. I believe we have uh, Councilman Andy Pico, and I just saw Councilwoman, where is she at? Oh, Jill Gabler, too. So thank you so much for coming by and participating in this with us. Uh, again, this has been something that's been, I know the Sally Clark, our, my former colleague, I'm going to turn over most of the history to, uh, to her to be able to explain, but it's important for us uh, as a region to recognize our history. When you start thinking about history in Colorado, if you've been here long enough, transportation really touches everyone. And I'm glad that we were able to find a home for this, and I want to recognize former Commissioner Sally Clark to kind of give us a the history of everything that has happened with this project. So, Sally? Thank you, President Glenn. Um, I wanted to recognize um, somebody that, in addition, this wouldn't have happened without, and that's uh, County Administrator Henry Yankowski, who usually is a man of few words, but he gets stuff done behind the scenes. So let's give him a round of applause. So this is exciting today. We have all these folks here, and um, I don't have exactly the history. I know that the artist is here, Steve Wood, and he's going to talk a little bit about that. But um, about, I think it was about a year ago, we had heard that the city uh, had this mural in the transit depot and wanted to find a new home for it. And so we tried to find a place that would work well to really showcase this amazing piece of artwork. And we'd originally looked at the Citizen Service Center on Garden of the Gods, but we couldn't find a wall that was long enough so that it didn't have to be split up into sections. And so we found this wall here in front of Centennial Hall, which was kind of plain anyway, and thought this would be a great location to add some aesthetic value, to really add some cultural value to the front of Centennial Hall. And so we worked with artist Steve Wood to be able to uh, place this here and got his sign off. Um, Henry was able to find some sponsors for actually getting the sign post made. We didn't want to hang it on the, on the wall. We wanted to have it freestanding. So in case it ever needed to be moved or taken down and, and redone, that it was eligible to do that. You know, as someone in the tourist industry, I feel really passionate about the arts. And I know that there are some other folks that are gonna talk a little bit more about that. But the cultural significance of adding this piece as well as our other artwork here in front of Centennial Hall and the Pikes Peak Center really adds to the vibrancy of our community. So I wanna thank all those who've been a part of this, the past commissioners, the current commissioners, the city council members who've had that happen. Thank you, Councilman Pico and, and Gabler for being here today. Um, and it's really just great to see this come together. And special thanks to Steve Wood that has only not only made this a more attractive location, but really has showcased the history of the Pikes Peak area, El Paso County and Colorado Springs. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. And uh, if at this time we could uh, uh, bring up uh, Andy Vick from Copper, the uh, cultural office of the Pikes Peak region. Uh, you know, we, we are very, very appreciative of the artwork that uh, rotates, uh, some of it between city facilities and county facilities, and, and the artwork that's on display throughout the, uh, throughout the region, uh, throughout the downtown area in particular, and, and for the performing arts that uh, enliven our lives. Our lives. And uh, Andy, if you can uh, talk a little bit about, uh, about how much it means to us. 
sure can. Thank you, Dave. So good uh, afternoon, good morning. Uh, my name's Andy Vick. I'm the executive director of the cultural office of the Pikes Peak Region, also known as Copper. And it's our job in this community to support arts and culture in any way we can, from the visual arts, performing arts, literary arts, film, etc. And we have an amazing arts and cultural community. And I want to take a moment and just acknowledge uh, the previous county commissioners under Sally's leadership uh, for being so supportive of arts and culture. They've added uh, numerous pieces to uh, public buildings over the course of uh, the years. And it's really helped to uh, enliven our community and make it more visually attractive. And I want to encourage the new uh, seated county commissioners to continue that tradition. Art and culture is so important in this community. It's part of what makes this a great place to live. And uh, with the leadership that we have, not only at the county, but in the, at the city and in the other municipalities, I hope we will continue to support it and encourage amazing talent like this gentleman, Steve Wood. Uh, he is a true treasure in this community. You can find his uh, creative handiwork all over the place. And I'm very pleased to, uh, to let you know that the Cultural Office has just nominated Steve for a Governor's Creative Leadership Award. Uh, we don't know yet uh, what the outcome is, but uh, we're thrilled to have nominated him because he is really setting this, the bar high for arts and culture in our community. And I uh, appreciate that, I respect that, and I thank you for all you do. And thank you everyone here for being so supportive of arts in the Pikes Peak region. Thank you, Andy. Uh, the county's complex is a big part of downtown Colorado Springs, and we're, we're proud to be here. And uh, I'd like to bring Susan Edmondson up to uh, talk a little bit about uh, all of the great things that go on in the downtown area. Thank you, Dave. Um, as I always like to start off with, welcome to the Downtown Creative District. For those of you who don't know, Downtown Colorado Springs is certified by the state of Colorado as a creative district. And it's because of projects like this. It's because of our great artists, our nonprofit organizations, as well as the many creative industries downtown. Um, and just a quick factoid on that. There's a way to measure creative activity. It's called the Creative Vitality Index. And the barometer right at one would be the national average. Downtown Colorado Springs is more than five times that average in terms of creativity, um, creative industries, all those kinds of things that are going on every day. Um, so I think uh, having this panel here is such a wonderful way that we use art to educate, to tell a story of civic life, um, and, and really connect our community. And while I was asked to be here sort of wearing my downtown partnership hat, I think the one hat I have that may be larger than that is my fan of Steve Wood and fan of Concrete Couch hat. And Steve has been doing this kind of work for so many years all over our region. And we, you know, every project brings together such a diversity of people, young and old and all backgrounds. And it's through art that we are able to uh, make projects like this happen and bring people together and meet their neighbors and have great things happen. I would say, Steve, you may need room for another panel as you're start telling the story of transportation because we're going to need an Uber and a Lyft panel and autonomous vehicles, baby rail line. We're, we hope the panels just keep going as we continue to address our transportation needs in the community. Um, but thank you again, especially um, Steve and all of your team for all that you do. And uh, thanks for to the county for really bringing this art to a much more visible place that really uh, looks absolutely beautiful where it is. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, we work with uh, our uh, partners at the City of Colorado Springs on lots of things. Uh, this is probably one of the smaller ones, but certainly one of the most important ones. If I could ask uh, uh, Council, Councilman uh, Pico or Councilwoman uh, Gabler, and you can fight amongst yourselves to come forward and uh, talk a little bit about this piece and, uh, and uh, cities. Nope, they're going to decline. Oh, here we go. I honestly just found out about this event this morning, so I'm, I'm, I'm not really prepared to speak about this, but I can speak to the fabulous collaborative spirit we have between the county and the city and the partnerships that, that we build, and, and this piece is just another example of uh, that partnership, the collaboration between the city and the county, and also, as Susan Edmondson said, just how fabulous our downtown is in regard to arts and, and our arts district, and this is just another fabulous piece, and thank you to Steve Wood. Um, if you don't know, he has pieces all around this downtown to include the new huge pumpkin 
down uh, further east and, and this lovely piece over here. So we're grateful to him and all the other many artists in our community. And the city of Colorado Springs is very grateful to the county for its efforts to uh, keep our art in the, in the city and, and, and thriving. So thank you very much. The, uh, the history of the Pikes Peak region has been driven by innovations in transportation. The city of Colorado Springs, depicted on the mural behind us here, is uh, depicted as General Palmer's fountain colony. It was, of course, a railroad town with streets designed to complement Palmer's Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. And for decades, the DNRGW uh, carried uh, passengers and freight from Denver throughout the world famous Royal Gorge and onto the Western Slope. The new Cimarron interchange and the transportation upgrades just getting started along the West Colorado Avenue corridor from Old Colorado City to Manitou Springs are of course along the alignment of the Midland Railroad. A scenic drive along the Gold Camp Road wouldn't be possible if there had never been rail service to the mining camps of Cripple Creek and Victor. For a brief time from 1928 to 1929, Alexander Aircraft, here in El Paso County, just north of Colorado Springs, was the largest aircraft manufacturer in the world. And more planes were built in Colorado than anywhere else in the world. And if you follow recent economic development and new jobs announcements, you know that aviation is still an important and growing segment in our local economy. The mural is here today, thanks to the efforts of former Commissioner Clark, and certainly thanks to the efforts of our artist. And at this time, I'd like to bring uh, Steve up to talk a little bit about this uh, beautiful piece of artwork uh, that we now have on Centennial Hall. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, first, I'd like to say a word about Concrete Couch. We're a nonprofit. Uh, we do a lot of projects in the Pikes Peak region, although we work around the state and around the country a little bit. And our mission is building community through creative projects. Uh, I, we have a board member here, Natalie Johnson, director of the Manitou Arts Center. As you know, with nonprofits, we can't exist without a board, so round of applause. <laughs> they work very hard. Uh, we also have some volunteers here. We've got Brian, Cree, and Mady, and maybe some others up. Oh, Miss Sally has done some volunteering, so. Thanks to you guys for being here today and for helping. Uh, we do a lot of public art with Concrete Couch, uh, but we also do music and performance and job training, and we do a lot of light infrastructure. We've built four bridges, uh, and we get a lot of folks to come in and help us. We're just starting a welding program right now out in Manitou where we're working with middle school and high school kids. Uh, we're going to be making some gates and some fencing and some other things like that. And they get a lot out of it and they get to contribute to the community. And uh, often much less than it would cost uh, to have a contract to do it. So thanks everyone who's helped and brought us in on things. Um, through Concrete Couch, we have many, many projects in the city, in the county, unincorporated areas up the front range, down the front range, western slope. But the county has been really great to work with. We've done a number of projects uh, all over town, and that's been really super. Uh, this mural, I'd like to say a few words about it, very special to me, because through Concrete Couch, I, we got a giant pumpkin. Yes, I got to help. We got a huge duck in Acacia Park. Yeah, I got to help with that. We got all kinds of projects and bridges and benches and maps and murals and gardens. I have one piece of artwork that's mine in the Pikes Peak region and it's right there. So round of applause goes to the county for that. Uh, it was in the city bus terminal originally as a graffiti prevention project. In the 80s and 90s, there was a lot of graffiti in town. Uh, so we partnered before we had a nonprofit uh, with the city and went to the highest damaged areas. And we worked with community groups and often with super at-risk teens, 
teens that were kicked out of their regular school and we put them through a very rigorous program. They could earn community service, but we were hardcore. If they needed 10 hours, they had to do the full 32 hour program before we'd sign off on them. And they really learned a lot of stuff and they were able to present to the Arts Commission of the Pikes Peak region, and kind of dress up a little bit. And they had council members shake their hand for the civic duty that they were, you know, their, their civic efforts. Um, and I'm still in touch with some of those kids. Some of them are now in their 30s, late 30s and have their own kids. So it's kind of a neat legacy piece um, with, with that. Uh, so getting back to this mural, uh, my own personal work, I really like to tell a story and I like to engage people and I really like to engage youth. I also have studied with uh, Eric Bransby, who is now 100 years old, lives in our community, He's the last remaining WPA artist still living. Uh, he's been in Who's Who in American Art for 40 years. Well, I'm going to say almost as old as I am, but no, I'm, I'm a little bit older than that. Uh, and Eric also has influenced my interest in murals. And his murals uh, grace the Fine Arts Center, um, the Pioneers Museum, and he has a real interest in telling a story in history. So when I had the opportunity to do a mural in the bus terminal, it made sense to really focus on the history. The bus terminal, it's a downtown hub. Uh, and I went to the Pioneers Museum and to the special collections and had a blast learning a lot about uh, this kind of rich history that we have related to transportation. So I won't go into much detail, but maybe say one or two things. Uh, with the mural, it's very simple. It's set up chronologically. And I was thinking about fourth graders who study Colorado history. So we do have a little curriculum. And maybe we can print that up and put it inside the county offices. Or maybe online is the way to do it. Um, but there's lots of questions that we ask the kids and get them to think about it. And I'll just, I'll just give you two of them and uh, leave it at that. So if you were a young person back in the day and you were in back east and you were having a hard time making a living, the draw of Cripple Creek was pretty strong. You could go make your fortune, you come back. It's usually a man, the big man made some money. Uh, so people were coming out in droves with very little. Uh, the direct route was following the big drainages and then taking the Smoky Hills River that would head straight towards Pikes Peak, right at it. Downside, you stop about 90 miles away. You got 90 miles of desert, no water. But that's the quickest way to get out there. You can start with a buddy. They could take the safe route. They could take the Platte up to Denver and come down. They could take the Arkansas down to Pueblo and take that up. So if you started with a buddy and they took the other route, you might beat them by a week or two. Oh, you might die of dehydration. <laughs> so what would kids do? Oh, that's a great question for kids because they can get all into that. They've played all those video games that have all those scenarios. But this is a real world one that's right here. The last thing I'll leave you with is kids like bikes, right? I mean, I remember being a kid and having a bike was like, those two went together. I was fascinated to read the history. There was a period here, pre-car, when only dudes had bikes. It was the way to get around. You didn't have to feed it like a horse. Uh, they also had the ordinary. It's a funny name now. Anybody know what an ordinary is? Yes, big wheel and little wheel. Now it's anything but ordinary. They're really unusual. They actually had bike races. And who had them? The wealthier folks that were, had good paying jobs in the mines in Cripple Creek. They had ordinaries. And they'd have bicycle races. And they have set records on that single speed ordinary that have not been broken. These are, that's incredible to think about. We've got the velodrome. These old timers were crushing it with these ordinary bicycles. Uh, interestingly enough, when they then went to the kind of two wheel, 
um, their circumference was 29 inches because they were designed for adults. And then when the car came around, bikes kind of plummeted, wasn't really going anywhere. People were driving cars. That was the new way to get around. And then this uh, German guy by the name of Schwinn came up with the idea, hey, if I shrink the wheels down to 26 inches, maybe I can sell these to kids. And he did really well. Um, now, nowadays, there's a resurgence into 29-inch wheels because they're actually made better for you know, us big people. So there's a lot of great history. I'll just uh, finish up by saying thank you so much to the county for making this opportunity available as a muralist. Even Eric Bransby, who I was telling you about, has done murals here in town, which were moved and then lost and now gone. So super famous people, of which I am not, but as just a local artist, uh, I'm super happy to have this piece. And this was slated to kind of get lost or recycled as plywood sheets to somebody's brother who's building a shed. Um, so thanks so much to the county uh, for making this available and going to all the effort to hang it beautifully. Um, I'm happy if anybody wants to talk to me later about other stories here, but otherwise, big round of applause to El Paso County. Thank you.